jittering into the paint. Booker. Oh my! That is ridiculous! Welcome to a Valley Sports Plug Phoenix Suns playoff recap for round two, game three. I'm Chris Patrick, and with me is my man Michael Benjamin here to break it all down for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at how game three broke down for the Phoenix Suns here at home against the Denver Nuggets. Both teams came out firing in this one. The score 31 to 29 Denver with the lead at the end of the first quarter. In the second, the Suns stayed aggressive and outscored the Nuggets, and the Suns held a 15 point lead going into the break. The score 52 to 67, and things were looking up, man. However, the Nuggets were able to turn the tables and fight back in the third, erasing the deficit, making it a close game by the end of the quarter. 88-90, to the Suns still with the lead going into the fourth. Despite some late foul trouble, the Suns were able to hold on and win this one in regulation. The final score, 121-114. to Still behind in the series two games to one, but taking the first steps in battling back, winning this first game here at home. But now I'll pass it over to Michael Benjamin for an in-depth look at how Game 3 broke down. We head to the Valley of the Sun, and as Chris Patrick would say, a must-win Game 3 for the Phoenix Suns. And to start this one off, KD was cold, but Booker was hot, scoring 18 in the first. The Suns forced five turnovers, and there were 11 different lead changes, but they still found themselves down by two. And to start the second... A huge boost of energy came from Jock Landell and TJ Warren, who were both holding their own on the defensive end. And the Suns go on a 19-3 run, and Kevin Durant finally gets going, scoring 18 of his own in the quarter. And the Suns take a 15-point lead into the halftime break. And within four minutes in the third quarter, it evaporated, and they were outscored by 13 in the third and only had a two-point lead heading into the final quarter. But to start the fourth, they came out rolling with a 7-0 run. But the Nuggets win the bonus early with seven minutes left. But Booker and KD, they closed the door with a contribution from TJ Warren in the final two minutes. And the Suns take game three by seven to make this a closer series, two games to one, heading into a very critical game four on Sunday. And with that being said, Chris, it's that time. We know what it is. It's the three keys of the game. So I got to pass it over to you so you can let us know what number one is. First key of the game, our overall aggressiveness. We really saw the Suns come out and play with that urgency we needed them to play with. They were attacking the rim more. Now granted, mostly Kevin Durant, he got almost all of our free throw attempts. He was 14 of 16, and as a team, we were 16 of 18 from the free throw stripe. But aside from that, the bench came in and was actually looking to produce. They were putting up shots and making those shots to boot. And what I like to see is they were closing out on shooters on the defensive end, getting a hand up in the face and having better rotations. At times, I think the defense could still be cleaned up a little bit. But overall, I really liked what I saw from the Suns and how aggressive they were playing tonight. Right, and just to start off, like you said, more aggressive on the defensive end. They were closing out on drives, making it really hard for the Nuggets. I mean, Aaron Gordon didn't have any points in the first half. Who had been their number three guy? Michael Porter Jr. did get it going today. But we had some key defensive stops on Jamal Murray, who does score 32 and is their leading scorer. But he struggled from the field as well. And the Suns offensively? That second quarter obviously was a huge one, gave them the momentum boost that they needed basically for the rest of the game. But they were aggressive to start. I mean, they were in the bonus with nine minutes left in the second quarter. And Kevin Durant was the main one in that. And I love to see smart players will understand when you're not hitting from the floor, you have to make adjustments. As coaches, Chris, you know, we say play inside out. See the ball go in a couple of times. Even if it's going to the free throw line, start getting those easy shots to go for you and then expand your game out. And that's what Kevin Durant did. And his overall aggressiveness kept his stat line nice, even though his field goal percentage was pretty horrendous tonight. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for the people. But with that being said, let's go on to number two. So what do you got? 
For the second key of this game, it has to be the bench production. We saw them score 22 points combined, which is, I think, pretty close, if not tied with the high for this playoff as far as bench production goes points-wise. But it wasn't just the scoring on the offensive end. It was the defense. Jock Landell, we saw him come in and play really well late. He also was 3 of 3 for the field, scoring himself. He wasn't quite covering Jokic as much, but he did. He did. When he was out there, he was playing D. As we said, TJ Warren hit some big shots late that really helped secure this win. I don't know if this falls under bench production, but I think it has to be said, Landry Shamit, man, is continuing to audition for his permanent bench role. And I think that's where he needs to stay, man. If Monty Williams hasn't learned his lesson by now, I don't know when he will. We saw Terrence Ross come in and actually play some meaningful minutes, not in garbage time. And he was letting it fly. I think maybe he needs to learn to play inside out a little bit, see some of them fall before he just starts chucking up three-pointers. But overall, despite my nitpicks there, I really liked what I saw from the bench tonight. Specifically with TJ Warren and Terrence Ross, it was a breath of fresh air to see those guys out there. They're bucket getters, and the one thing you can say is that they don't lack confidence in letting it go. Unfortunately, TJ Warren did have some head scratchers on some of his shots, but Terrence Ross was aggressive. He didn't shoot that great overall, but you get more bench production from points, which is what you need. I mean, this team, let's face it, folks, moving forward, they're probably going to need 80-plus points from Kevin Durant and Devin Booker night in, night out, but you got to get some help from somebody else. So to have that firepower come in, it was a much-needed boost. And TJ Warren did exactly what you want from a guy who's on the floor down the stretch, which is not hesitate, made his two corner shots to basically cement this one for the Suns. Jock Landell, you just can't understate the energy and the effort that he showed throughout his entire 20-plus minutes tonight. I know a lot of people are calling for DeAndre Ayton's head and saying, Put Jock Landell in the starting lineup and folks, pump the brakes. That's not the answer. The answer is to keep Jock Landell within this rotation and continue to give him 20 minutes. Let him come off the bench, bring that energy for those second unit guys, and just leave it all out on the floor. There's nothing that can go wrong with letting Jock stay in there, especially with the size mismatches that we need. Bismarck Biombo, I love him but he was just a little bit too undersized for these bigs for the Denver Nuggets. And Landry Shamit, I sent you guys a video. I was very upset. The eye test is still not passing for him. He did play a little bit better on the defensive end, but he's still going over screens way too high on the chase. On the offensive end, let's not get started. The man is lost. So I don't understand why we can't just spread out those minutes more to Josh Kogi or extend Terrence Ross and TJ Warren within those time frames. I know you lose Chris Paul, but Landry Shamit's just not getting it done. I don't know how many more times we have to keep saying this, but we take a dub and we'll continue to make the adjustments because I know the Denver Nuggets are going to come out in game four with a big adjustment on what is key number three for this game, Chris. I wonder who it is. And for anyone wondering, you knew we had to make this one of our keys. One, Devin Armani Booker. He was an absolute stud tonight in all-time performance for the books. 47 points, 20 of 25 field goal shooting. For those of you who aren't good at quick math, that's 80% shooting from the field. 5 of 8 three-point with 9 assists to boot. I'll let Michael Benjamin get more into the nitty gritty and the intangibles, but man, just what a performance from Devin Booker. But my biggest question for this is, is that sustainable for him to continue to do, especially as they start throwing double teams his way, as we started to see in the second half of this game? And that's the biggest key, exactly just like you said, Chris. They started hedging him out almost at the half court line as soon as he started getting across. And he had to swing the ball, but the Suns were being patient and letting him reset and swinging him the ball in space and letting him attack downhill. And that's what Devin Booker did all night. He was finding his zones. He was finding his areas for shots. He made some tough ones like he normally does. But that's what you see when you have two high prolific scorers like a Kevin Durant and Devin Booker on the floor. 
I mean, one's going to get you somehow. So like I just said, the Denver Nuggets are going to come out and they're going to game plan heavily against Devin Booker and try to get him off of his game early and make the other guys step up to the plate. Specifically Kevin Durant, because yes, he does score 39 points, but he shot 12 of 31 tonight. He shot 10 of 27 in game two. So he's been struggling a bit from field goals right now, but he did adjust and started attacking and got to the free throw line, which is what you're supposed to do. But man, we're at the point now where Devin Booker just keeps stacking up these incredible performances in the playoffs, and I can't even pick them out anymore. So just enjoy the moment. This kid is a superstar. You can't deny it anymore. And if the Suns are going to come back in this series and eventually go on to the Western Conference Finals, it's going to be on his back. So, Chris, we took game three, as you had labeled, a must-win game. So I'll pass it over to you for your final thoughts from this one. Man, I just got to say, they cannot take their foot off the gas. They need to continue this energy and this momentum into game four to win that one. And then on from there, we'll have to steal one in Denver eventually. In this game specifically, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I know we were messaging back and forth as we do, pulling our hair out, what little we have left after this playoff run. And if we continue on, I might be bald, but... Man, I'm just really excited, really proud of this team as they continue to battle. I know a lot of people are upset with DeAndre Ayton, and he's taken a lot of flack in the past couple days. Obviously, I think there's some maturity issues there that still need to be ironed out. There's a clip floating out there of Chris Paul trying to give him some encouragement late when he didn't come in during the fourth quarter and him kind of blowing off Chris Paul. And so I think that just speaks to his immaturity, if you will. As I said, he needs to grow up a bit, live up to the moment, and he'll be all right. Whether we end up moving on from him or not, he's going to be a guy that we need for this playoff stretch. And we'll need him to play as best as he possibly can. So while we have him, let's hope for the best. And I'm optimistic for, for the future. The one thing that we have to continue to do is continue to play the chess game. This is a night in and night out adjustment match. And Monty, you have to give him some credit. He stuck by his word and said Terrence Ross and TJ Warren were going to get minutes. And they made a difference. And he saw that DeAndre Ayton was struggling down the stretch. And he went with the guy who had the hot hand and had the energy in Jock Landell. That's what you have to do in the playoffs. This is about wins. This is about giving your team the best opportunity to take games because... It's very crucial, and it is just so tough to scratch out 16 of them damn things at the end of the day. So buckle up, Suns fans. Sunday is going to be crazy. If you're going to the game, make sure you bring that energy. Because, Chris, I'm going to say it again. This is a must-win game. We yeah. have to win game four in order to keep this series tied up going back to Denver. Absolutely. And the Suns will have just one day off before that game four. Like you said, this Sunday, May 7th. Of course, we'll be sure to bring you a recap of that one on Monday. So make sure you tune in, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the Valley Sports action. For Michael Benjamin, I'm Chris Patrick, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.